Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, today's the day we dive into, literally, the MPK Music Public Kingdom slot-in record player, equipped with our new digital scale to measure the tracking force after I made the modifications that we did some time ago. By the way, my little droid here, you can go out of the way back here. A little helper on the workbench. Um, a few of you have no noticed the beautiful reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. That is my Magnavox 1968 four-track player and have mentioned an interest in seeing more. So if you want to learn more about that unit, we've done a lot of content about it. So just search reel-to-reel. -reel. So we're going to take this thing apart. It's a very interesting unit, a very, very interesting unit. I avoid doing taking it apart too often because I mean, it is definitely a novelty player. This me metallic front panel is a sticker that separates the two molded halves. And, you know, it's an adhesive based deal. So, I, you know, there's only a certain amount of times that it can come on and off without losing its stick. Plus, the screws, as is common with stuff, is cheap screws. So, you know, they have a tendency to strip a little bit, a little bit more every time. So there's a finite amount of times you want to get into these things, but, you know, this is a good excuse to get into it. So measure that tracking force. I think it's interesting on this unit. It was battery powered. It had, in fact, I'll show you. It's got a battery in it. A little uh, Nokia type cell phone battery they use for everything. Uh, but check this out. Look at look in the hole there. See how it's white plastic inside? You can see it right here too. They actually spray paint these. It does have speed adjustments on the bottom, by the way. Instead of using like a color molded plastic, they actually spray paint it, which is, seems like an interesting approach. Come on. This one's already slipping. And that's my fear is I'm going to get like three out of four in and be hung up on one. Okay, it's coming now. So a cool little unit. I want it to work. But if you've been around since the beginning with this thing, it destroyed my Dave Brubeck take five single. It was stupid of me to put it in there on a unit that I wasn't sure about. Ironically, MPK has gone on to make some really great stuff. And apparently this has been since modified from a design perspective. A lot of companies, you know, if I give them feedback, they're like, okay, we'll let our R&D people know. And you wonder, does that really happen with these guys? It definitely did happen, apparently. I mean, that's what other people, not just the company, but other, you know, actual users of these products have told me. This is going to be that screw. <sighs> Come on. Just one more time. It takes more and more pressure to get these out when they start to strip. Anyway, they said they really made a change to it. So the essence of it is it uses a clamp system to apply. Okay, we got all four out. It uses a clamp system to apply, apply downforce pressure on the stylus. And there's different settings, um, and you'll see that in a minute, but it was, a, it was basically putting way too much force down. We took the clamp and uh, adjusted the settings so it wouldn't do that. But yeah, that uh, battery I was mentioning earlier is now fried. Okay. That sticker comes off. This is actually still a fascinating, fascinating mechanism. And we can remove the lid, which has a little speaker in it. This will make a good thumbnail, so let me hold it there for a second. <laughs> a little screen grab for my future self. And as you can see there, the adhesive back to this unit. Um, so yeah, this is an, a fascinating mechanism. There's the little cell phone battery, easily replaced. But short of that, we'll just power it off of the 5 volt. In fact, we'll run it with the lid off so you can see how it works. Um, very unique mechanism. It's got this tone arm here. Everything is, you know, it's not designed to be seen. It's designed to function. So there's unfinished surfaces and things. They're a little different than what you're used to. But this is the tone arm. It is counterbalanced. And then if you see these little holes right here, there was a spring fact is it's still there I might have just taken it out completely that connected those two holes on that bar to one of these 
and depending on the angle that you connected the top to bottom it would increase or decrease the stylus pressure and this is a typical Chuo Denshi type uh, ceramic which is fine I mean it, it is what it is it should track about five or six grams that's the kind of force those take in order to render usable audio so I took it off completely uh, via Westlife did a video on this before I got to it and he said I mean not this exact one but this model and he had measured it at like over 10 grams before that mechanism I don't know if he modified his or not um, but I, I just took that mechanism it was it's not even a fix it's just readjusting the spring that was there but I tested it with no spring just complete you know no clamping pressure whatsoever and it still worked there was enough tracking for us just from the weight which we're gonna measure here in a minute but I want to uh, point out a couple of different things we got the typical JYK motor this is the same electric motor that powers all the suitcase players the J3 I did it again LP3 and a lot you know LP60 LP60X this is in like 90% of entry level turntables even the LP3 has this or not the LP now I'm calling that the LP3 I'm trying to say this guy right here a little three inch deal yep see same motor let me zoom in a little bit so G JYK E what does that say 530 EG 530 is that literally the same 530 yep so there you go a very common off-the-shelf motor this is a belt drive turntable one of the first things I noticed was the masking tape going around here it comes from the factory with that that being said it's kind of a fascinating mechanism because it can play both small spindle records and large spindle records the next thing I notice is the fact that the platter as it were has no uh, rubber on it that's just hard plastic so there's nothing in terms of rubber there's no platter mat you can say this see this as an off-the-shelf as well you know where the rubber nubs would plug in but this one doesn't use that over here you've got the uh, amplifier everything teeny tiny volume control I find it interesting that the eject mechanism connects to a rod that goes clear to the back and this little foam pad here literally protects the circuitry underneath from uh, you'll, you'll notice it lines up with the stylus it literally is designed to keep any particles from the vinyl that it was scraping out of your records or the <laughs> just a normal wear and tear playing that it would come across from falling down in that circuit board now one of the issues I take uh, one of the problems I see with this design is that inherently you can't access a stylus to clean it that being said it looks really clean right now and I haven't touched it since I got in here last so possibly by fixing the tracking force I have eliminated that problem and therefore you don't need to worry about cleaning it all the time but you still should clean it I'm a very big proponent of cleaning your stylus okay so let's power it up now typical five volt power supply this is an example of when I by the way thanks for all the kind words about the show last night the stereo tour I mentioned that I use the Kenwood receiver as a switch power source this is an example of when I do that I'm gonna plug it in right there obviously kids don't do this at home you don't want to open things up and power them on that being said I choose to do this and they there you go my five watt death will be your amusement so let's go ahead and uh, try it out let's start by uh, again the top shell literally just has the speaker it's a mono speaker and a slot so it's a uh, this is this is a um, passive piece of the system meaning that all the controls and everything are here so we're gonna imagine our slot is right there so here's how this thing works it's kind of crude but you literally pick the speed so we're gonna go 45 it'll you know it's only seven inch records only and uh, all you need to do is tell it the speed this does Bluetooth as well if you wanted to receive Bluetooth and use this as a Bluetooth speaker volume control and on and off switch is right there so now we're sliding our record in and how does this thing work well it starts by not spinning Come on. There we go. 
sometimes you have to give it a little extra love. And you'll notice that the needle, I'm gonna zoom in, jumped to about an eighth of the way in. It has a tendency to do that as well. It just kind of comes crashing down. And we're gonna test the stylus pressure here in a minute. That's the point of the video, but I wanna show you how this works. You'll see that the, uh, the spindle adjustment adapted to the large hole size. We're gonna test that with a small spindle hole as well. Now this is, uh, it is pretty basic. I mean, it's automatic at this point. It just runs, there's a volume control, that's about it. Obviously we're not hearing much now because you're just hearing the acoustic sound off the phonograph right now. The speaker is disconnected. And when you want to stop it, you just push this button and it shoots the record out. <laughs> so it's got a mechanism, it's got a safety as it were in place to keep the record from dragging across the stylus until it's ready to play. But it's imprecise, because see, look at this. As I'm sliding, it's a dirty record. As I'm sliding this in, that last little bit, it was like kind of in contact with and it still wants to hang on. And then when you hit eject, and now it's not even touching. Oh, because it's so light. That's what, Okay, there you go. So it's an imprecise thing. You probably won't see me putting my new prized Glenn Miller 45s in this thing. Let me just say that. That being said, it's really not doing any damage. I can play styrene on this thing now. No worries whatsoever. And we take that out. And if we wanted to play a 33 RPM, has to be seven inch still. We just change this to 33 and it will automatically adjust to play this size of a record. Sometimes it takes a little bit extra love. Come on, what are we doing, guy? Okay. Sometimes you really have to... Works great, as you can tell. Come on. It's a novelty item, okay? It's still cool. I think it's a cool novelty item. There we go. I think it's... See that, you see that bend when I push that in there? Two bad things. One, how hard you have to push it in. And second, how flimsy this record is. <laughs> this is a very cool record, though. And filthy. Um, but anyway, yeah, not really going to have any issues in terms of it damaging it, other than the fact that you have to rough handle the record to get it work, get it to work with this mechanism. Now, you're either jaw dropped in dismay that I'm doing this to records before your eyes, or you think it's pretty cool. I think it's a cool novelty. Again, am I going to play my prized records in this thing? Probably not. But let's settle the mystery of tracking force. So, I'm pretty dang sure we're going to need to calibrate this thing to go above 5 grams, but you never know. So let's go ahead and turn on the scale. I'm going to zoom in. And we're zeroed out. And I am going to try and position this thing. This thing is pulling back to the start position. So I'm going to have to kind of hang this over the edge a little bit. One gram. Yeah, I don't know if I trust that. I don't know. The thing is, is you can't track too light with a ceramic. It can actually cause damage by tracking too light. Let me try to get this further out. No, it really thinks it's right in that ballpark. That's surprising. Hmm. This is such an imprecise mechanism. Let's zoom out a little bit. This is such an imprecise thing that it's really hard to tell, but by all intents and purposes, she was zeroed out. She appears to be zeroed out again. Tracking just over one gram. So maybe I need to actually go and add a little bit of weight by putting that spring back in at a light position. That surprises me. I thought we'd still be at five or six grams. So there you go. It's not going to damage your records by tracking too heavily. It may damage it by the fact that you're sticking it into a plastic jungle <laughs> of parts that are imprecise, but it is still a cool, cool, cool turntable. Can we call this a turntable? I think it's a record player. It's a record player. It's not going to replace anything, but it may augment your setup with a cool alternative so if you want to get one if you can afford to get one just to play around with it and have fun and take it for what it is i'll put a link in the description below if i can if they're still selling it i don't even really know uh, i know that the mpk uh suitcases people have had good luck with them i've also heard of people having issues with them unfortunately 
it's kind of hit or miss. But MPK has done some really cool things as well. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what you guys' comments are. I know a couple of you have bought this thing. It is very cool. I know it's based on a 60s design that actually allowed you to carry it in an upright position. This one won't. I understand that. But kind of cool anyway. All right, guys. I hope you thought that was interesting. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Give me a thumbs up even if you didn't. But subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything, including our lives where we do giveaways. And all that good stuff. But that's going to do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.